manager for Friends of the Boundary Waters Wilderness. I thought it would be nice to head out into my neighborhood and see if we can do some tree identification. So one of the things that I love about the Boundary Waters is all of the coniferous trees and I was able to find some similar species in my neighborhood. They're not, they might not be the exact species that we have up in the Boundary Waters, but these tips and tricks might help you to identify a few of the common conifers found in the Boundary Waters and that I was able to find in my neighborhood. The way to start to identify what type of pine tree it is, you can tell by the number of needles in the cluster. On this tree, as you can see, we've got these really long needles. I'm gonna pull off this part here. And this is growing from one point on the tree, but it has two needles. This one fell from this tree. It's pretty short and stubby. It's pretty stiff and it's a smaller cone. It's pretty rigid, but it has this red undertone to it. that they're really fine and really flexible. They are growing in clusters. And attached all together, I can count five needles. A really good way to remember this tree is that if you have five needles, you've got a white pine because there are five letters in the word white, W-H-I-T-E, five needles. The other thing that you can tell about a white pine versus a red pine is that the cones are much longer. They're long and narrow, oftentimes covered in sap and really sticky. This needle isn't flat, it's got some edges there. And I actually can roll it pretty easily between my fingers. Now, the cones of a spruce tree are gonna be really flexible. They're kinda like paper, they'll like crackle, um, and they come apart pretty easily. They're pretty soft. Last thing is to check out the bark. Over here, we've got a pretty bumpy bark with spruce trees. You'll see this kind of peely bark. I often think of spruce bark as looking like little, little potato chips. Mm -hmm. 